We're not talking about names that are put on the outside of a building. But we are talking about a living organism that's working together in order to attain to a place in God that will bring about the glory of God one more time in the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Talk about a sanctuary. You're talking about God's house. Say, well, we'll go into the sanctuary. No, we sanctify this place by our presence. Amen. But it's an, another warehouse. Did you hear me? It's another warehouse. I thought. And you put words in the warehouse. But we sanctify it and we make it a sanctuary. Hallelujah. It's what we do in our beings if we are possessed by the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I always like to begin at the beginning. When did God begin to build a house? Right in the beginning. But everybody that was born didn't get into it. But there were some that got into it. And I'm not going to labor the point here, but I'd like to turn to a scripture in the beginning. I think it's the 28th chapter, isn't it? Of Genesis. Genesis 28. There's a story there that's always intrigued me. And if you don't begin at the beginning, you'll often miss the pictures that God was painting in order that he might portray to the people yes. what he had in his mind. Wouldn't you like to know the mind of the Lord? Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. You know, we're told to have the mind of Christ. And if we don't have the mind of the Lord, we'll never know and never have direction. We'll not know where to go and how to go. And we'll miss our way. And that's what a ministry is for. To teach. Say, well, doesn't the Holy Ghost lead and guide you into all truth? Yes, it does. When you get teaching. When you get teaching, it doesn't fall out of the air. But God has anointed or called a ministry, ordained a ministry, in order that they might lead and guide. And as they lead and guide, then the Spirit of God illuminates what they say. I don't want to go into the order of God today, but I'll just give you that on, in passing. In this 28th chapter, you know the story, the story of Jacob. And Jacob was a twister. He's called a worm in the Bible. <laughs> you know, God can use worms. He said he's going to use worms to thrash mountains. What he said. I'd like to be one of those worms. Have you ever noticed what a worm is like? It teaches some lessons, you know. You can cut a worm in two and both ends will go running off in different directions. You can never get a worm to straighten up. It never will. But when God gets hold of a worm, he can do something with it. 
And Jacob had uh, stole something by deceit. In other words, he couldn't wait for God to give him what God had ordained for him to have. And when his uh, mother found out that his brother was on the war path and was ready to kill him, she told him, you better run. You better run, boy. And he ran. And I'm sure that he must have wondered, after all that he had known about God, now have I committed the unpardonable sin? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we can get ahead of God. Come on. Sometimes you can run so far to, ahead of God that you'll miss it. I don't want to be too far ahead, nor too far behind, <laughs> but I'd like to keep in step with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, tells me in the Bible that Jesus is coming again. I believe that. I believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back to the earth one of these days. I believe that. Well, there are a lot of people in 1870, and some of them down during the last few years, they believed it too. Yeah. They set a date. Yes, sir. And many of them have. They sold their houses, some of them. And then they went to a mountain place that uh, the prophet, false prophet, <laughs> had told them that if they would stay in that mountain area, they'd see Jesus come down and light on that mountain area. They were a long, long, long way ahead. They got ahead of Jesus. They got ahead of God. You can do a lot of things and get ahead of God. That's true, brother. And God will not back you up. That's true. But I want to like to be in step with the Lord. And that was the way that uh, Jacob was. And here he was. He'd been running hard all day. And he came nighttime. And he found himself in a rocky place. A desert place. And he laid down. And as he laid down and went to sleep, he slept on a, a rock, put a pillar, and he had a dream. And he dreamt that uh, the heaven was opened, and he saw a ladder, and the angels of God descending and ascending down to where he lay. And he woke up. <laughs> it's good to wake up now and again. <laughs> Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and the Lord shall give thee light. In the 13th verse it says, Behold the Lord stood about it, and said, I am the Lord God of Abram thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Uh -huh. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the south, and to the north. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee. Oh, I'm sure he felt good then. Well, I have missed the Lord, even though I did something that was contrary to his will. I love the mercies of God. See, God forgives our impetuousness or our zeal 
Sometimes we have a zeal without knowledge. And we do things outside of the will of God. But if that is a sincere desire, God looks on the heart. Aren't you glad for that? God looks on your heart, whether you're sincere in what you're doing, that the knowledge that you do have has not been sufficient to guide you. I'm glad he overlooks us. I'm glad he lets us go by. He did me for a long time. And uh, now and again, he does it now. I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked, fully awake now, yeah, fully awake. out of his sleep. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. Hmm. What was the house of God? That rocky desert wilderness? No. Was that the house of God? No. No. That wasn't the house of God. But he was in a heavenly place. God met with him. God began to talk to him. And when God talks with you, that's a visit in the house of the Lord. So it's all right for us to say, well, I was in the house of the Lord this morning and he talked with me. He talked with me. Did you hear him? And Brother Goforth was teaching on the meaning of the baptism of the Spirit. Did you hear? I mean, did you really hear? Not the sounds, but that meaning. Those little glimpses of truth Hallelujah. that could get a hold of your soul yes. and illuminate your mind yes. and let you see the pathway that you're treading. Yes. Well, this is bloomed out in the... John's Gospel. Go ahead. If you turn to John 1, there's another story there, and it illuminates this story. For what is concealed in the Old Testament is fully revealed in the New. And in John 1, towards the end, there's a story about some men Starting at the 43rd verse. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets it's written Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph 